First of all, why do you have this going on? I don't know. All right. If you guys, I turned the ringer off. So if you guys have tangent squared of x divided by secant of x plus one equals one minus cosine of x divided by cosine. Now, generally, I told you guys in your notes, I said you work on the hardest, most simple side. Anastasia, Anastasia, work on the most difficult side first, right? Well, in reality, do these kind of look pretty similar? Yeah. Yeah, they look pretty similar. Um, what I would usually say is, still, when looking at this, anytime I have a binomial in my denominator compared to maybe like a just one trigonometric function, I would prefer to work on this. I want to get this. My main goal is probably going to be to get this to make it look like a, um, to make this binomial make it look like the monomial, make it to one trigonometric function. So I am going to focus on the left side. OK? So there's a lot of different things. Um, there's a, uh, a lot of different things that we can go ahead and take a look at. Um, one thing in our trigonometric, trigonometric functions um, that we have, don't we believe I had 1 plus tangent squared of x equals secant squared of x? Yes? So one thing that I, another kind of trick that I see is I know that tangent and secant are related via the, via the Pythagorean identities. So if I'm going to choose to focus on this side, I know that these two are related by tangent and secants, correct? And the other thing I notice is if I want it to look like cosines, I know that cosine and secants are related because those are reciprocals of each other, correct? So would it make sense then if I can rewrite my tangent in terms of secants, then at least the left side of this problem is all in terms of secants. And then all I got to do is convert it to terms of cosines. Do you see how those are related? Okay. You want, like, you want sines and cosecants to work with each other, cosines and secants to be with each other, um, because they're reciprocals of each other. So I'm going to convert my tangent squared to secant. So therefore, the left side secant. And all I got to do is rewrite them to cosines. So if I was going to rewrite tangent squared, I can subtract 1. And you guys can see that tangent squared of x is equal to secant squared of x minus 1. Is that an identity? Yep. Okay. That's an identity that was given to you. Does everybody see that? I wouldn't expect you guys to automatically come up with that to you on your own. I would expect you to be practicing and do many of these problems and to struggle and to take down a lot of notes and to work through a lot of problems to then to finally say, oh, that kind of sounds like a good idea, right? Probably when you first start doing this, this does not sound like a good idea. You would have no idea what to do. So just try doing things. You're going to start getting, it's going to start being easier and easier. Automatically, I see another secant squared. Well, I don't want to go back to tangent squared. I want to keep it there, right? So one thing I notice, though, is a difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared. Square termed minus 1. 1 is always squared. So now I can rewrite this as secant of x plus 1 times secant of x minus 1 all over secant of x plus 1. Does everybody see what I did? Now, the reason why I did that is I need to get the secant of x plus 1. There's only so many ways I can get secant of x plus 1 off the denominator. I can multiply it by its conjugate, but that's not really going to, um, that's going to then want me to use the uh, identity again. That's going to take me over to tangent. So I don't want to do that. Can However, well, now, I can, can, now that I factored it, I can divide out using the division property. So I have. Those divide out, so I'm left with secant of x minus 1. OK. <laughs> well, we're close. I mean, kind of. I have secant, so I at least got rid of this. But now I have it as a term. I needed to write it as a fraction. Well, one thing we notice is secant of x minus 1, I can rewrite that as 1 over cosine of x minus 1. No, that's in the numerator. So I'm going to kind of, I'm getting short on space here, obviously. So I'm just going to do some work over here. So if I have 1 minus cosine of x minus 1, 
And if I want to solve this, if I want to subtract these, I need to get this to have a denominator of 1 cosine as well, right? So what happens when I multiply by cosine of x on top and bottom? I get 1 over cosine of x minus cosine of x over cosine of x, which gives me 1 minus cosine of x over cosine of x. Do you see this? Secant of x minus 1. It's right there. Right. Okay. right? So all I did was I replaced secant with 1 over cosine minus 1. So then I just rewrote it back up here. 1 over cosine minus 1. Well, really, that's minus 1 over 1. To subtract these, that's like saying 1 fourth minus 1 third. You can't subtract them unless the denominators are the same. So I had to multiply by cosine over cosine. Yeah, because you're not changing a fraction if you multiply it by the same number or a function. So it's cosine over cosine. So now, now I have cosine in my denominator. Now I can subtract my numerators, 1 minus cosine over cosine. And then it's now exactly the same as it was before. So I don't have enough work here to, or space. But you guys can see that, that row of work that I have. I didn't have to keep on writing the right side, but I kept on writing in there. All right. It is, and it's going to take time. There's no, there's no easy formula. As I mentioned, guys, like the, the process and the rules is very vague. It's basically trying.